Hello everybody from my side. Uh, I welcome you to my presentation the, about the procure-to-pay factory of the future, how emerging technologies gain process efficiency and save you money. Unfortunately, today I'm sitting in front of a black box instead of standing in front of you and having a more interactive session. Nevertheless, I think um, the next 20 minutes will be very interesting and I'm looking forward to your questions um, during my presentation within the chat. My name is Simon. I'm from the uh, Robert Bosch GmbH and working in the global business uh, service area. The global business service area at Bosch is responsible for all services and processes that uh, are done all over the Bosch group. Like, for example, a process like hire to retire or the procure to pay process. Um, I'm uh, working as a product owner in the procure to pay process and me and my team, we are responsible for the topic of user centricity and support automation. What does this mean? So we are taking care of all um, IT and processes the internal customers of the indirect procurement area are working with. And today in the focus of my presentation, the procure to pay factory. But why we are using the factory as a, an image for our process? Because like in a modern production line, in our process, the main targets are uh, reduced cycle time and in highly increased automation and uh, a user satisfaction. And like you can imagine, um, like in a modern uh, production line, our target is uh, zero PPM. So zero defects part per million. But before we come now to um, the content of my presentation, I would like to give you some um, insights about Bosch Group and indirect procurement at Bosch. You've seen on the, this slide the key figures of the Bosch Group in 2019. For sure, you can imagine in 2020, our figures look uh, slightly different. But nevertheless, nevertheless, to give you some ideas about uh, our business, um, the figures from 2019 are worth to mention. We, in 2019, the Bosch Group had roughly about 78 billion euros of sales revenue with approximately 400,000 associates on a worldwide level. Our business is mainly spread in four different areas. The first thing to mention is the mobility solutions area, where we are one of the world's uh, leading uh, providers of mobility solutions. The second one is the industrial technology area. Maybe some of you guys know our subsidiary, the Bosch Rexworth. The third one <coughs> is the energy and building technology area, where we, for example, are one of the leading manufacturers for security and communication uh, technology. And the last one is the most uh, well-known one, the consumer goods area, for example, with the uh, Bosch power tools and the, home, uh, the household appliances. All of those kind of products from the last um, part, uh, you can also find on Amazon business. And the last thing to mention on that slide is that still 60% of our share is uh, related to the mobility solution area. Now let's come to the indirect procurement area at Bosch. On the top, you can see uh, the name iBuy, which is um, a synonym for indirect purchasing at Bosch. Um, in 2013, we centralized all indirect uh, purchasing activities in the organization iBuy. And um, the project name uh, was iBuy uh, during that time and uh, the project name still remains. Um, and everyone at Bosch knows indirect purchasing as iBuy. In 2019, we had a, roughly around 830 associates. Uh, on a global level, we uh, were responsible for roughly 8.8 .8 billion of purchasing volume. Um, which was spent on 3.8 million purchase orders. We had about 30,000 suppliers and we were uh, supporting um, with our service 12 different business divisions with more than 180 
manufacturing locations in 47 countries with unfortunately still 40 different SAP ERP systems. If I would add here also the, the non-SAP systems, we would be above uh, 60 systems that we would have to support. When we compare those kind of um, figures to, for example, 2016, when Bosch um, uh, won the BME Innovation Award in Germany, uh, we had a roughly around 1,100 employees still um, and more than 60,000 suppliers. So you see, even during the last couple of years, we, uh, we already um, have been driving on that efficiency road uh, with our organization. So how is our organization in indirect uh, procurement um, set up? You see on the left side um, this category management area, um, which is responsible for the strategic part of the, the purchasing. They are in touch with our um, internal business partners. They are um, um, driving our suppliers. They are in touch with the different markets and they are supported by four different so-called purpose teams. You remember, um, I am a product owner for one purpose team uh, in the P2P area. There are also purpose teams supporting the category management, for example, with uh, the, um, in the general setup of material field strategy, supplier strategy, um, or in terms of IT and processes. On the other side um, of the slide, you see the P2P factories. Yeah? I already told you about the um, about our image of the P2P process. So we have four different factories on a global level. We call them hubs, so P2P hubs. We have uh, one hub in, in a main hub in India. We have one in Romania, one in China, and another one in Costa Rica that are supporting um, our customers in doing mainly those 3.8 million transactions that you saw on my previous slides. And again, the four purpose teams that support the P2P factories in further developing the processes um, and the IT landscape um, to do this process as much as um, automated as possible and to save as much money as possible within every transaction. Here you see another uh, picture of our P2P factory. What I want to show you with that slide is in the past, we were mainly um, focused on our end users when we thought about uh, improving um, our processes and IT infrastructure. But more and more, our in, um, customers uh, want to automatically create their transactions, for example, via interfaces to machining centers or vending machines. And in terms of our um, internal customers, um, they want to have improved user interfaces. They, they want to have mobile solutions to create shopping carts, to, to approve uh, their demands, to get their reports. So everything um, and th those kind of areas are the main focus when we are talking about how the demand enters our procure to pay factory. And um, also worth to mention, even though I'm talking about indirect um, purchasing in the P2P area, procure to pay area, we are responsible for the end to end process. So starting from the demand creation and um, ending up at the payment. As we are talking about um, emerging technologies, the question is what kind of technologies are supporting us in our procure to pay factory. First of all, uh, worth mentioning is that we are having a cloud platform where all the requirements, so the demands, are created, doesn't matter if via a user directly in a user interface or via an API connection to uh, a machining center or something different. The first thing uh, you see on the um, bottom left side of the slide, um, e-procurement, uh, yeah, this is not a, a, a new technology, but nevertheless, it's still important for us in the procure to pay uh, area. And also here we are happy to more and more um, you know, work together with Amazon Business uh, in the countries where um, all over Europe and uh, also the US and Japan. So uh, also in the e-procurement area, there are still new, uh, new players, um, new opportunities um, that we can use. 
for sure, mobility mentioned beforehand for our users is uh, an important uh, topic that they are able to create their demands not only in front of their laptop, uh, but as well uh, within the factories, um, scanning um, products um, via QR code, via barcode, um, via pattern recognition. Then um, user guidance, it's not a technology, but a very important topic for us in the procure to pay factory, bringing um, the user and the requirement to the right buying channel. We have different buying channels in place in the indirect procurement area, I guess most of you as well. There are options like the, cat the, the, the catalog, uh, usage of catalog, where also Amazon Business is an option. We have um, easy RFQ as an option for our internal business partners where they can um, do a self-service uh, request for quotation and uh, handle the whole demand without involvement of procurement. Um, all that things needs to be guided. Um, it's not always easy to decide when to use which um, buying channel. So user guidance is very important. Not only my area of responsibility, also in the, um, in the buying area. Then for sure, API is a, a topic. Uh, I will show you an example where we use APIs um, in, on one of the next slides. Uh, we have um, machine learning use cases. Um, I have also some uh, examples with me. So RPA, it's not an, a new technology, but important for us to improve our um, processes. We are using chatbots um, and for sure, big data, it's a big word. It doesn't matter if it's big, uh, deep data. Um, as you saw on the first um, or on the third slide, where, when, when I showed the KPIs of indirect procurement at Bosch, we have a lot of data already within Bosch available to improve the processes uh, and uh, to make for a machine learning happen. Yeah? 3.8 million purchase orders. There is a lot um, to learn from and uh, we are making more and more use of those internal data. So, like I mentioned, uh, I have some examples with me today. We start uh, with an API example. We'll come to a machine learning and chatbot example um, afterwards. Let me show you and explain you how the self-ordering machine at Bosch is working. We have, um, we have um, together with one of our pilot plants, um, designed a, a process um, to uh, support um, the um, predictive maintenance area. So that in case the machinery is uh, recognizing, I need a maintenance of a filter unit, um, automatically can order this. So the biggest part and the, the highest complexity for sure was within uh, the machining part, but nevertheless, to make the overall process happen, we had to support within the P2P platform. And that, so the process starts with maintain filter unit, the machinery, the sensors within the machine uh, recognize I need this maintenance. Then the next part is uh, the machine and the, um, the energy platform, which is connected uh, to all the machines in the plant, creates a maintenance order within the SAP that uh, to account um, at the end also the purchase order. Afterwards, the, um, the uh, energy platform is checking our catalog platform uh, if the item is still available. So end the service, then it's creating automatically a shopping cart, is accounting that shopping cart on the already created maintenance order. We send out the purchase order. The supplier is um, automatically um, co confirming the order. The, is, the um, supplier is conducting the service and uh, confirms the conduction of the service uh, via the machine and we can pay at the end after the invoice was sent. One example how we make use of API technology. So after showing you how we make use of uh, API technology, I would like to give you a short insight on machine learning. Um, I don't know how you handle um, um, GL account determination within your company. Um, we uh, have an uh, automatic solution in place. Nevertheless, in some cases, we have uh, a, a workflow in place 
so that our financial uh, department has to check um, the right uh, GL account. In case for one material group and value, we have defined uh, multiple possible GL accounts. And um, we uh, started now with, uh, with the machine learning use case in that area. So we analyzed our historical data and uh, based on that built up uh, this machine learning use case, which is integrated into our um, SAP process, so into the workflow. And uh, with that solution, um, we can reduce 100,000 workflows per year and uh, could save about five minutes per workflow. And uh, if we can calculate, uh, this uh, is already a number um, of headcounts that we could reduce in that area. And on the next slide, you can uh, see our dashboard. So um, we reached in that area an automation um, of, uh, I just checked today, now we are at 75%. We uh, sometimes recommend uh, only a GL account uh, to the accountant in the workflow so that he can check um, and just validate. And um, in that case, we can even learn from the manual uh, check of the accountant in the workflow. So uh, we, we went live by June uh, this year and could already save uh, by uh, beginning of uh, August 90 wor um, working days with that uh, solution. My last example is um, also something that is very interesting, at least from my point of view. We, um, we combined a machine learning use case with a chatbot solution. So we um, built up a, um, a model to predict uh, the savings potential for a purchase requisition. So based on uh, a couple of different um, um, uh, information, like the, the volume of a purchase request, the material group of a purchase request, the supplier, the country, and a couple of more information, we uh, derived um, the potential uh, saving. And uh, for um, a chatbot, the start and the target price of a negotiation with the supplier. And on my next uh, slide, you can see now um, a video about, um, of a negotiation of, of um, our chatbot, uh, the so-called Nelson uh, chatbot. So he's, I'm sorry guys, but it's in, um, it's in German. So Nelson is now negotiating with the supplier uh, a quotation. And I have to look to my screen also to, to see it. So um, the supplier is negotiating with, uh, with Nelson now. It's a, yeah, it's a for low value purchase requisitions. Mm, and without, a, um, not for suppliers that we have a, uh, a contract with. Yeah, so it's um, suppliers we don't have a, um, a very active re relationship to, only um, two or three touch points uh, maximum per year. Yeah, and we are um, further developing that solution and are, are also checking. Um, additional potential use cases to, to make use of uh, that Nelson. We have some more chatbots in place in, in purchasing, like for example, also support chatbot in the um, procurement process for our internal customers. And now we, we have a contract. So finally we have got an agreement with the supplier. And now it's time for your questions. Thank you.